It's the Blues Rock Show with Pete Francis and Willie Witten. Welcome to the Blues Rock Show. Pete Francis alongside Willie Witten. Today, our special guest is Jeremy Albino. He's got a new EP coming out on April 1st, Passed On. Jeremy, thanks so much for coming on the show. Hey, thanks for having me. So you released your debut full-length album a few years back, Hard Time. Yep. How does this album differ from that one? Oh, wow. A lot of things differ, I guess. Uh, I guess the process of making it was was so different from my first record. Um, my first record, I was green. I, I had never been in the studio. I'd never, I had just written a bunch of songs. Or I, I, I guess I had songs that I had kind of grown up writing. So it was like the first time just making music in a studio. And, and uh, so it was a lot of new experiences. And I guess actually there was a lot of new experiences with this this uh, EP as well because uh, it was just we made this during the pandemic and uh, it was kind of a really tough time for me with my family and there were, I guess I, everyone was kind of going through a lot of things and um, I had written these songs I didn't really know what the next step was going to be like I was trying to get in a room with my band but just due to situations like it was kind of hard to do that um just because of health problems within all our my band members families and it was just a little tough and um anyway we finally tried to figure out what our next step would be and we decided to reach out to michael trent of shovels and rope um where who i had just been touring with right before the pandemic hit um, we were just on tour through Europe and uh, I, we had wanted to like go down there to the studio and, and record, but it just didn't really work out at that time. And uh, so I had all these songs. We just kind of asked if Michael was down to, to maybe produce this, this EP. And we sent him all these songs via the power of the internet. And, uh, and he'd send stuff back and we had, that so that was the biggest i guess there was some there's a lot of new things experiences with that because i had never done that either and i'd been in a studio but i never sent stuff like remotely and um worked on a project remotely and uh it turned out great like uh michael and i uh he produced the record and but also he also helped me write a couple songs so i uh it was just like really fun to just like be able to work with like one of my idols. And um, I had been a fan of shovels and rope before I even wanted to be a musician. So it was, it was really cool to just be able to like share a, a song that wasn't quite a couple songs that weren't quite where I wanted them to be and see what he, he would bring to the table and what he kind of would, if he'd connect with them and and he really put a lot of heart into a lot of these songs and and i really appreciate that so jeremy another thing that i think of when i look at sort of the three main works that are part of your career at this point they're all rather different because in between your debut and this ep with cat clyde you have blue 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 and so the question i want to ask is where most artists find a sound that sort of works and they want to stick with it. You've now have three bites at the apple and they're all pretty different bites. Is that something you set out to do? Or are you just sort of letting your career and your experience with music grow or how has that happened? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I guess there's just a lot of things that I want to do and, and, and create basically like part of me there's sometimes I wonder like if I should just really try to stick to what I, what I've been doing. And, but I think everyone, I think most musicians always eventually kind of evolve in, in, in whether they want to or not. Um, I think like the blue, blue, blue project kind of just happened because it was just Kat and I had met a couple, two or three years, four years ago, I guess now, or I don't know. I even know, but <laughs> once we once we had like once we first kind of connected we realized that we both had a really big 
love for the blues and, and roots. And um, we both grew up on a lot of the same records. And um, so whenever we just hang out, we just would, we would just start playing these songs that we loved. And, and I guess I, I, I toured with her a couple of times and, and uh, even on the road, all we do is just listen to these records that we love. And, and when we were on stage, we play songs together. And so it just kind of made sense to make this kind of rootsy record of like, kind of a note to like all these records that we grew up on. Um, and so, yeah, that, that kind of just, nat a lot of these things just naturally happen. This EP, it, it was it wasn't really like i guess we would it would have been great to go down to to charleston and make a record with with uh michael but it didn't really work out in the in the in person but we did it on, on um from abroad and um i guess a lot of the songs that i was writing at the time it just like was the mood that i was in uh, I, I ended up writing a lot of songs. I don't know why I was writing a lot of kind of more melancholic songs about about loss and and I don't know. My grand grandma had died a year before I, I, I wrote one of these songs, and, and and I guess there was a lot of like kind of turmoil within my family. Like my there was a lot of health problems, and I don't know. It was I guess it was just a stressful time and these songs kind of just came from it and um they might be have a different sound than than when i first wrote my first record when i was a young kid just working on farms enjoying his time out out in the fields and i don't know life was a little lighter at that time i guess and um but yeah i think it just kind of flows with whatever i'm i'm really like vibing on and listening to at the time i'm like I, I I'm working on my 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 sophomore record coming soon, or I don't know when it's coming soon. But we we were just in the studio last um, January, and uh, and they're they're a bit of a step forward from my like first like my first hard time record, and and uh, I'm really excited to see the, to put these songs out too, and people the, the, the my friends and family that I've shoot been showing the songs to have been really liking this direction nice. it's been going and yeah yeah and I, and even after that like i'm also working on this other record that i'm excited to i haven't even started recording but i've been really digging into a lot of old soul and kind of i don't know motown and r&b and um and I, i'd love to make a record like that soon so it's just kind of like different passions i guess different different i love so much so many different styles of music that i want to be making all kinds of stuff to you know yeah and jeremy for this new ep you've got a music video out the night was young yeah. tell me about that because one of the things that sticks out to me when i look at your career and your music is you put out a lot of music videos and uh, you've got a very cool cinematic style you went out to las vegas to record this Seems pretty fitting for a track like The Night Was Young. So tell us about that. Uh, yeah. Um, well, we we kind of like finished wrapping up making the EP and we're like, all right, we got to we got to make some video. We got to we want to kind of put it out sooner than later. And uh, um, at the time, it was like middle of winter in Canada and we're like, we got to find somewhere where we can make a video that's not cold and slushy and ice and uh and i don't know we just kind of brainstormed and we're like we could go to it'd be good to go down to like to las vegas maybe we could shoot some stuff there we could get all the neon lights and we just wanted that energy because that that song is is uh the night was young is just a song about i don't know there's some 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 kind of joy and and kind of party i guess um atmosphere to it i guess and uh so we uh we my my the guy who shot the video is like my long time kind of collaborator mark Clauston. he's he probably's done almost all of my music videos 
Um, and uh, so it's always just a pleasure to work with him. And we were just like, let's go on an adventure because we just wanted to get also get out of the cold of Canada. And uh, so we flew down to Las Vegas. We kind of had plans on making two videos. So there'll be another video kind of coming up uh, with the, well, with the album. Um, so we kind of did a two, two for one kind of session in Las Vegas where we did the night was young, shot a bunch of stuff in, in the city lights and kind of just had fun with that. And, um, and then the next one will be uh, Acre of Lamb. And we kind of just had fun out in the desert. This is beautiful. I don't know if you guys have been, uh, that was my first time being out in the desert in, uh, in Nevada and California. And it was just, just a blast. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely cool out there. Most times when I'm in Vegas, I waste my time on a blackjack table, unfortunately. So <laughs> everyone... <laughs> well, I yes, think at I... the, the beginning of that music video, I think there's a shot. I, was that Red Rock Canyon that you were driving past? Uh, I don't know. Oh, no. The, the Red Rock, where's that? Is that in... That's, a, that's in Vegas. Oh, is it? Maybe. I, 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 we were kind of... Dri- I was doing the driving a lot of the time. And... I was trying to act. They're like, you got to sit. He's like, you got to sit. I was like, okay. And I was just like going for a straight line. And we had like walkie talkies. Like my manager was in the, in the car following us. So he'd just be like, where are you guys going? And we're like, we're just doing a take. We're just got to, it was just, it was a lot of fun. So it might've been that probably. I, I, we kind of went like uh, towards like California. We went down to Shoshone and a couple of different spots like uh death valley and um all the way back up to las vegas so we were just kind of like doing doing the rounds it was it was a blast so speaking of fun if i'm not mistaken uh you have been on one of the uh joe bonamassa sponsored blues cruises yeah yeah (laughs) yeah so fun that to me sounds like it'd be a lot of fun how was your experience with that oh man it was a blast honestly i guess well you you had mentioned the the blackjack table (laughs) <laughs> they got, they got, they got, uh, they got a little casino on these, these cruise ships and, uh, me and my band kind of got in a little trouble out down at the, well, we, we got into the blackjack, but then some of my bandmates really got into the, into the roulette. And, uh, I was lucky I came out, I came out with, uh, with a bit of change in my pocket, nice. but, uh, some of the guys in the band didn't, didn't, didn't fare as well, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that was a, a an amazing experience. I, I'd never been on a cruise or like a like anything like that, and uh, and I, I wasn't quite sure what to expect. I, I had a couple other music musician pals who had done similar things, and uh, and they're like, "Yeah, it's kind of like it's a really." I think I thought it was a really fun experience. It it can be kind of like a. It is a really unique experience. It's like some of my my friends were like, it's kind of like a weird, unique thing. Cause like, when do you ever get to be on a play a show in the middle of the ocean, <laughs> on like with all these amazing musicians? The food's free. It's a like a. It's basically you're like on a really nice hotel, and you're just playing shows every day. And when you're not playing shows, you're just relaxing. And it's just like. It, they're like i don't know how to explain it and then when i once i did the i had the experience i was like i can't i understand what you're saying i don't know how to explain it just like a once it's like a very unique thing and you have a blast on it you you could kind of go both ways you could either like just like have a lot of fun and like play shows and and go to blackjack table and i don't know just like indulge in a lot of things or you could just take it easy and like play a lot of play the shows go sit on the deck read a book take a nap like I kind of did a bit of both you know um I think one of my favorite things was I I was playing basketball and there was a basketball court on the back of the boat and (laughs) so every morning I'd just be out there shooting hoops and and uh and it's fun you get to meet the like everyone who's on the cruise is, is such a big music fan like they this is like they this is kind of like i feel like a lot of people's like mecca they're just they go they save up every year and and that's their favorite thing to do they look forward to it every year so 
Um, so it's just nice to meet a lot of good folks who, who love the music and, and, uh, and yeah, it's, the shows are fun. It's, it's a blast meeting other musicians and connect, connect, connecting with a lot of them and, and just catching other shows too. And the food is really good. There's really good Indian food on this, on this boat. Let me tell you. Yeah. And you get to be surrounded by a lot of like-minded people, which is nice too. Yeah. Yeah. That that's, yeah, that's the main thing. You, you kind of, it's kind of like the, the perfect, perfect show, I guess. I don't know. Like all these people are there because they love music, you know, they're not, they're not, they want it. They're excited to be there, you know? So, um, and then the musicians as well, they're just like crazy talents. So, um, it's just, it's just a good hang. Looking at your tour dates, it looks like you're heading to Europe. Have you ever gone and toured over there before? Yeah, yeah, I, I have. I've been over there, well, I guess it was January and February of 2020. I was over there with Shovels and Rope. Um, and it was a blast. I can't wait to get back. I, I really love touring through Europe. And um, I think it'll be a lot of fun this time around. I, uh, there, there, there'll be a little smaller show. I'm, I'm kind of just give, making it out on my own and trying to see what kind of test the waters. And um, and I think it'll be fun. I've, I've got a lot of, I always got a lot of people in Europe just messaging me being like, when are you coming to Europe? And, and in my, in the comments and all, all that. So it'll be nice to, to just connect with them and, and play some shows. And I don't know, it's just really fun touring through Europe because every city is so different in the cultures and, and the food and uh, I'm just looking forward to it. So well, Jeremy, still... this has been really great. Do you have any final thoughts before we let you go? Uh, no, I guess uh, <laughs> thanks for having me. I, I got, I got the EPs coming out April 1st. I'm looking, I'm, I'm on tour right now. Well, I'm on tour with sho uh, shovels and rope until I forget until <laughs> mid April. And, uh, and then I'm, I head to Europe and yeah, thanks for having me. I'm excited to, for y'all to hear the new uh, EP and eventually um, I'll have another record coming out too. I'm excited to, it's in the works right now. So I'm just excited to share a lot more music with you. Thanks, Jeremy. All right, well, go check out the new EP passed on on April 1st. That's Jeremy Albino. I'm Pete Francis alongside Willie Witten. That's going to wrap up this week's edition of the Blues Rock Show. We'll see you next time. <laughs>